Guys, welcome back to Mantalk.ke. This is a new season. And before we even kick off this season, thank you for the love on the last season. It was one of our favourites for sure. One of our favourites. There was some really funny sound bites that you guys enjoyed online. So thank you for sticking around. Welcome to the new season. This one's going to be just as good. I was hoping this season started with me and Oscar in the same country, but it's not. And that ties into what we're talking about today. Um, Oscar, before we kick off, how are you? How was last season for you? How are you? Looking very dapper today. Oh, thank you, thank you. You know, it, new yeah. season, we are bringing in the heat. Um, so uh -huh. you know, just just a nice the little premiere. code. You know, a nice little code. Uh -huh. You know, to celebrate the fact that this is our seventh season. Um, yes. Me and, me and Eli have been pushing this thing for a while now, and the yeah. fans have been pushing with us. So we thank the community mm -hmm. and everyone. The sound bites last season were mad. Um, hey. My one of my favorites was what men really think. Yeah, we are because we're always mm -hmm. thinking. <laughs> um, a lot of a lot of fire in our socials. So check out our TikTok, our Instagram. It's it's fire there. Um, the team is doing a really good job. Shout out to Becky Beryl and Big Man Eric. So let's let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing. Let's yeah. keep pushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like I, I mentioned, like I mentioned, um, you know, we we wanted to be in the same country. And it kind of steers into what we want to talk about today, right? We're going to just talk yeah. about experiences in different cultures. So I think the first, the, first, the first pit stop on this train is we arrive with me experiencing Kenya, you experiencing UK. So let's flip how that went. So I want to kick off with you, okay, Oscar. Because you went to go. the UK. What year was it that you went to the UK? Uh, 2015. Uh, it was 2015. Yeah, I was in Kenya at that time. I came from yeah. was mad. So we literally switched, switched. <laughs> what was... Okay, let's go. So was it summer or winter when you came? It was summer. Summer 2015. Summer. Mm. Ah, I wish it was summer. winter because you would have been hit yeah. with a different... different <laughs> kind of what was it like? like when, but, but when, what the, was your the, first experiences? My, I, I think when, when I remember the UK, I think the, the first experience I had was um when i was boarding when i just arrived and then i was being checked at passport like at the passport section at border security that was hey. my first experience that's when i was told i was kenyan you know you never know you're kenyan mm. until you yeah. like <laughs> until you're reminded uh very firmly that you're, you're a mm. citizen of kenya so so i show mm. up so i show up i remember the the lady at the passport control it was one indian chick um and then mm. the other and the other guy was like um caucasian very a very caucasian man mm -hmm. um looked at my passport yeah <laughs> he looked at looked at my passport and said kenya yeah then, then he asked me that's not that's not that close to somali is it is that it's very close to somali isn't to it yeah then i was like oh i thought you said bali uh -huh. yeah it's somalia he asked me it's very close to, yeah, it's very close, yeah. yeah it's close to somalia isn't it i was like yes yeah, yeah. The, they share a border could you please um walk with me this way um kindly uh it's <laughs> <laughs> like he said somali i bet yeah i was like i was like okay yes we share a border with somalia um but uh, and we love the people but uh, so he sits down mm, mm. asks me uh, because i at that time I, I i still had hair on my head it's not um, very different it's very different from okay. now it's yeah. a different reality it's a different reality <laughs> yes yes so so he asks me so <laughs> yeah so he asks me um, are you mm. muslim uh you know questions like that like really I was like, I didn't Just really no chill. Yeah, I really didn't think much of it at the time. Like, but he asked me a number of uh, questions that I found a bit unusual. Um, um, have you carried any food in your bag? You know that question. It's always a trap, by the way. Mm. Have you carried any food in your bag? Yeah. It's a trap question because yeah. if you say no, <laughs> they check anyway. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like, yeah. They said because I caught yeah. that. I was like, no. Why would I carry food in a suitcase over? Eight hours, twelve mm. hours. I can just buy food here. So once I said that, she was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Then he was like, "Oh, okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Please proceed." Can I just so, pause you on that food thing? Yeah. Can I just make a public service announcement yeah. to any African parent? This is the stress you put your kids through when you send them with food. This is the stress. Oh that my God! Go I, have I, have I have a story. I have a story. Those couple kgs. Oh my God! I have a story. Those couple kgs. Stress. <laughs> I have a story for food across a border. I simped for a chick when I was very young in Belgium. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Mm. And, like, I carried, oh, like... Oh, is it? Oh. Yeah. And then I carried... Uh, I carried... Uh, what was it? It was, like, um, achari, which is a Swahili sweet. It's a delicacy here, which is 
um, dried mango with, um, with, um, with, with, with a spice, with a red spice. So it's very sweet. It's a Kenyan mm -hmm. delicacy. I suggest mm -hmm. you try it. If you're in Kenya, look for acharis. Um, they are very famous. You can find them around Jamia Mosque um, or around town in CBD. So this um, girl had asked me to carry acharis all the way from Kenya to Belgium. They successfully got there. Don't ask how they did. Those little but red ones with the kind of the, the, yeah, those red ones, yeah, those red sweet, yeah, those red sweet things. So like yeah, no, I've tried it. I've tried yeah. it. I've tried it. I've tried so it. You, you can imagine oh, when imagine <laughs> when I was. That's what you mean. <laughs> so so I was in I was in Brussels. Vile. <laughs> I was in Brussels. So yeah yeah the the guy the guy with the dope effect for a shirt thinks a child is horrible let's not let's not talk anyway so so saying <laughs> <laughs> so, just a harsh palate <laughs> <laughs> so so i end up so i end up so so i end up in brussels giving um so i end up in brussels with a cherry and this chick was like she just took it like thank you she didn't know the mini heart attacks i had in every border stop <laughs> <laughs> like the mini heart attacks you know <laughs> You're like, uh, you're like, uh, like, oh my God, yeah. So anyway, I yeah, think let's get back true. to let's get back to the UK story. So now, um, so you're there at the border. You're so there, yeah. so I make it past I make it past border security. And I, back in those days, um, Uber existed in London, but like I didn't know what Uber was because Uber hadn't gotten to Kenya. Mm. You get so you don't know what yeah. Uber is, but it exists. Um, in 2015, mm. Uber mm. was uh, had operations in London. Uh, but at the time of my arrival, mm. Uber still hadn't gotten to Kenya. So I walk, I walk out, mm. I walk out of the um, station. I was actually alone. Um, it was my first time in a developed country on my own, like first world country. UK is the first first world country I've um, I've ever visited. So actually, no, is, is it? No, it's not. Actually, now in hindsight, it's not. But it's the first time I had gone abroad in a first world country alone. So mm. that, that was the first no time. No one can verify this. You can lie if you want. It's fine. No, 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 no. I don't want to lie. So so yeah, uh -huh. so so I so I so I head for the so I head for the exit, go to the taxi, and I, I remember immediately my mind switched from shilling to pound. You know the like the the switch <laughs> yeah. where you're like yeah. I'm going to pay thirteen pounds from here to where I'm going to stay for the next two yeah. months. I was like, wow, yeah. that's a lot yeah. of money. I was like, yeah. one and you know that time the sterling, like the sterling yeah. is yeah, it was like one fifty. So fifteen by thirteen, one for hey, you guys, it was like two, it was like three thousand shillings. Yeah, but I was like, yeah, I, yeah, two, 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 yeah. yeah, it was like mm. three thousand shillings, mm. yeah. Because yeah. and mm. that's what I paid, uh, like from airport to hotel. I mean, not to hotel. How many minutes? My residence. Um, I was staying at a very nice place, um, a very, and I'll tell the story about the people I met there. Um, I, was, I was staying in a neighborhood um, close to Bedfont Lakes in um, Feltham. From the airport, it's like a 15-20 mm -hmm. minute drive. Because I, I could have taken mm -hmm. the bus. Now here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Now ah, I could have yeah, taken yeah. the bus. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could have taken the bus for a fiver. <laughs> I could have taken the yeah. bus for a fiver, but I paid... Th yeah. I paid about about 20 pounds like from yeah 13 to 20 yeah it was 20 pounds i remember that meet this is the first time i'm seeing this also this is the first time i'm seeing the it's meter painful. reading the meter re and i entered that mm -hmm. black you know that black taxi that we see in kenya <laughs> yeah. oh first mistake yeah never enter the black taxi <laughs> yeah that black taxi oh dear you know yeah. that black taxi it keeps going up yeah and then like you know i've entered i've entered it's like you know as a kenyan you know this is a, it's very What's the name of the? Uh, I'm here. Well, you know, the I'm name, here. this blue. <laughs> the red, you, you know that 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 British show called Thin Blue Line. Thin blue. I think it's called the Thin Blue Line. And um, there's a show. Not there's really. a show. There's mm. a there's a show mm. called the Thin Blue Line. So like you always used to mm. see like the black taxi, or you know mm. even Sorry, down yeah. downtown Abbey. Ah, that is the one. You always used to see like people yeah. enter. Oh, yeah. You know, a black taxi. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Like that British movie scene that's in Kenya. Because we used to watch that in, uh, we used to watch that when we were kids. Normal people, normal yeah. people don't get taxis here. Normal people don't take the black taxi. Yeah, you just so don't do it. yeah, so I entered the black taxi and I yeah. paid like, ten, mm. like, yeah, I paid like twenty pounds. I paid a significant amount of money. You'll forgive my memory. It's over five years ago. So when I got there, mm. um, so yeah, so when I arrived um, in the UK, yeah, it was just it was just fun. It was bands. Um, it's an open question, but I remember 
when I was driving through the UK, f the first thing that really hit me was like the infrastructure, like the roads. You know, you guys don't understand. Mm. The roads are okay. I don't know why there's whining about infrastructure in, in England, but the road from my this, uh, mm. yeah, mm. my airport mm -hmm. to um, from my airport to like where I was staying, like you know, I could see lanes, I could see overpasses. You know, this is not something that Kenyans mm. see every day. We don't see, we never used to see oh, overpasses as much. Wow. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. So that's my first, I think yeah. that's a good snippet of my first 10 minutes in, in London. And then I also had, a, mm. I, I had a very, very interesting interaction with a very beautiful blonde lady who was selling coffee at Starbucks. God bless that girl, wherever she is. They always are. They, they're, always, yeah. they're always there. She's a yeah. uni student. She's got a good family, but she needs to make some extra money. And she, mod <laughs> model, she models on the side. And oh, I mean... Um, yeah. That's... That's... That's a very... That's a... Yeah. That's, a that's an interesting uh, interaction. When was the first time you saw this look from a white person? Which look? That? The lip. Hmm... Yeah. I, I have never seen, I, I don't think I have, I, I don't even think I clocked that, bro. Like, what's that supposed to mean? Bro, <laughs> that's any, any time you walk past someone, the, you know, in Kenya, maybe we go, you just do a head nod, like. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll probably say Sasa, or something like that, right? In England, all everyone does is they just, because they're very awkward. So that's the standard. <laughs> you just, you're right. Yeah, you're oh, right. yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, no, let's let's let me flip the question back to you, and then we'll talk about like the personalities in the UK that I met yeah. versus a lot of the personalities yeah. that I've seen here, especially in the work environment. Um, I think that's something I saw and noticed. So yeah, so you, how were your first ten minutes in Kenya? First ten minutes in Kenya, what was that like? Okay, I'm gonna go to the first ten that I kind of remember vi vividly because I used to come when I was a kid, and that didn't really count. My first. My first feeling when I came, let me let me remember when I landed. First thing when I landed, and now you're you're getting out of the plane yeah. was the heat that just went boom and the humidity, and I was like, it was it was just like getting hit with humidity, right? Because I come in winter and I come here, it's like December time, so it's summer, right? So like it was just firstly just hot. Then the one thing I remember is when I was like coming out of the airport, is the lack of smiles. The, we need to work on our hospitality, okay? <laughs> the lack, everyone's face just seemed really just stone, just... Because you know we don't fake it in Kenya. We don't fake, we're not going to be doing the... Trying to smile all the time. So I, my first thing was like, why is nobody... Why is nobody smiling? Like, why are you is, kidding me? Why is nobody I thought smiling? that's the... I, yeah. Are you kidding me right now? I thought that that's the life yeah. you guys live in London. In London, like, no one... No, no one was smiling at me. Yeah, but everyone fakes, yeah, but everyone fakes it. Everyone, everyone fakes. Everyone fakes it. That's the thing. Everyone fakes it in London. But here, there's no faking, so there's not a lot of just fake smiles consistently. So there was that. Really? And then I remember, firstly, obviously, when you go to somewhere new, the first thing I always notice is license plates being different. I was like, okay, everything's, it's, everything's K, 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 K. Like, that was the first thing. I was like, oh, everything's K. Then, another thing is, you know how you firstly noticed the infrastructure? Same thing, but now the reverse. I was like, oh. Like the roads were the first thing because I've just I'd never really taken in another sort of country. Everyone I'd been in sort of in Europe, America. So when I came and I was like, oh, the roads aren't what's it's, it seemed like it wasn't finished. That was my first impression. Like it seemed like it wasn't finished. And then I was seeing first it was just so many Toyotas. I'd never seen so many Toyotas in my life ever. Just every other car was a Toyota. And then I was seeing models and ages of cars that I hadn't seen before. Like I'll just look and see like a lorry. But it's from like nineteen something, like nineteen eighty, and it's and because you're not used, like you're saying, when you get there, and you're like every car seems to be new, every road seems to be like paved. Now my thing, my shock factor was like the reverse, like why is the sidewalk not completely paved, and why is that car so old? Those are my first initial things, and then what happens, especially when you're picked up by uh, somebody that's like family or somebody that you know, is they're just putting fear in you. They're like, don't put your phone outside. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't be, be careful. I'm, go I'm saying I'm going to the bathroom. They're like, don't touch anything. Da -da -da. I'm like, what would you, what? Well, after a few months, I realized this is all just nonsense. Obviously, there's cautions you do, but it becomes second nature. But they always say that, you know, you stand out so much when you've just arrived that you're like a target. 
And yeah. I was like, what do you mean I'm a target? Everyone is black. Like, we're all black for once. But um, those are my, my sort of first impressions was the, was the infrastructure. Yeah, but I, now that I've been there for a long time, it's yeah. like when I'm now not there, the things I miss are so different. Like now when I'm here, yeah. I miss the lack of infrastructure. I miss the chaos. Now I, I'm dying to get on a border border, see those guys selling peanuts. Like I miss that, that vibe of Nairobi, that city vibe of Nairobi. Just hearing Swahili every two minutes, that somebody la- loud, loud laughing, a massive phone call. I miss that chaos that used to shock me when I first arrived. Yeah. So it's really strange how a few yeah. months can... And it, when I came to England, it seems very bland. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, the, yeah, predictable... yeah. the, the one mm. thing that I'll say about England, there's no sauce. Mm. No sauce. There's you no guys, zero sauce. No Just sauce. Like the there's no mm. flavor to your lives. I don't know. <laughs> I, it's like, first of all, time, all the traffic yeah. rules are followed. Oh, my days. This is a good to thing. A tea. Yeah, this is, this is a good thing. Ah. Yeah. For an economy, yeah. but there's no unpredictability. There is no risk. There's yeah. no fear. <laughs> like, how do you live like this every day? The train, yeah. the subway comes you in can... at eight p.m. Sir, eight a.m. Sir. You know, can I punch a ticket? And if yes. it's eight o one, yeah. If, if it's, it's eight o one, oh, this is a travesty. What? This what, is what, terrible. What do, I, what do I pay my taxes for? <laughs> yeah, you come to Nairobi. Come to Nairobi. Do you know what we do in Nairobi? Let me tell you. At that age, I was, I was, I was um, twenty one when I when I was there. At that age. Mm. I used to like where I grew up. I used to hold on. I used to hold the side of a matatu. This is what I used to do, you and like I still that. enjoy it. Hold yeah. the side of a matatu yeah. when it's moving. This guy's collecting fat yeah. the back. There's there's some yeah. island love. She says she wants a man from the island in the back. I'm hearing my <laughs> Bob Marley in the <laughs> back, you know. And then I'm now put in this economy where you know, like, excuse me, um, mm. excuse me, um, is that seat taken? Yes, please, please, do please have a seat. I'm like, what the, what the hell is this? Oh, sorry, sir. That's priority seating. Yeah, yes. <laughs> sorry, sir. That's actually priority seating. Oh, what, so what? you can't actually sit there uh, unless you're pregnant, disabled, or overweight. What you know. the hell is that? <laughs> like in in Kenya, if you're pregnant or okay, uh, but all jokes aside, we do we do have we are very cautious people. Like we're very um, kind people. So it's yeah, not, true. You know, yeah. Naturally, so like yeah. we will see the situation and we will the matatu will adjust. So for those who don't know, a matatu is uh, our primary mode of public transport. Um, strong, strong. Uh, <laughs> it, it is privatized, very private. It is run through circles. So you can mm. imagine that the speed at which uh, this matatu moves um, yes. because they need to make money. Yeah, it's very fun. Um, mm. Mm. You, you can mm. also see certain faces on the vans. So these um, public transport vans have a uh, Nicki Minaj face. Lil Wayne's face. That you know used what? to shock when I first came. Yeah, yeah. it's a form of yeah. uh, artistic expression for Kenyans. Your subway mm. Mm. smells terrible, but is not a form of artistic expression. <laughs> what is the reward <laughs> for wild. a subway that smells like that, Eli? I, li- listen, I'm African. Let I'm used. I'm used to as many. I'm Kenyan, in fact. I'm used to smells, but the smell in the subway is something to be documented. I mean, it's wild. Yeah. It's, it's 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 wild. It's 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 definitely wild. Yeah. Um so would you say that the expectation lived up to the reality? Um okay. Um I still have we still haven't talked about other topics before we get to expectation versus reality. Um no, no, okay, ask what you want to ask and we'll get to the expectations. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah, see you wanted to say something. Yeah, nah, nah. Me huh? me I'm about to ask you a question, hmm? Eli. First of all, <clears throat> I need to understand how it works, uh, especially when it comes to <laughs> oh, relationships. I don't, I, I, that's the one thing I couldn't understand. Because I, I saw like, I saw Jamaicans with people from Pakistan. I saw people from Pakistan with Kenyans. I saw people from uh, Rwanda with um, Caucasian men. I saw people from Guyana with... Somali men, I saw, like, I couldn't understand the relationship mm-hmm. st- structures, um, especially when it comes to socialization. And people there were very open-minded. But there was still this overtone of class and racism. There's still an overtone of it. So mm-hmm. I, I, I couldn't understand how that works. How is it that um, somebody who's, like, from s- people from cultures that are so different have managed to live together for over, over 100 years, actually? But they are still racist. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. Like, what's the yeah. what, what are the motivations behind um, that? But the natural sort of osmosis when you have the ruins of an empire is that you know you're gonna have everybody that you 
ruined, uh, sort of come back to come to where their their colonizers are and try to make a life because they've been fed that narrative, right? So naturally, when you come here, what happens is the common struggle kind of unites you. So you'll find that everyone that is a dark that is a slightly darker shade of white or from a different place will have an affinity with each other. Okay. So you'll find that you know you'll start to uh, sort of transcend your culture and go to someone else's culture. And within that culture, you'll start to experience life together. You'll start to live on the same block together and share. And you'll go and you'll start, if you're maybe uh, from Wanda, you'll start going to eat Jamaican food because it's in your area because you're yeah. stuck in one, in one place. And you start to mix with some Jamaicans and then they're like, oh, you should come to this. And they go there and you find that your cultures are just continually. And it's all because the common ground here is that you've all been oppressed, right? So you're all sharing that struggle. So what you find is in that dark place that you're, you're sort of put in you start to fall in love with people from a different a different place and you start to find that maybe your kids they all go to the same school and so now for them they're used to being with a with a somali they're used to being with an asian they're used to being with an african and for them it's normal because that's now their reality whereas yeah. their parents sort of started so yeah. second generation just start to but but know, yeah but but, but here's the to, question but here's the question I still saw mm-hmm. that some relationships mm-hmm. were strained within those, like I noticed that within those mm-hmm. um, cultures, within those um, races of mm-hmm. people, that interracial mm-hmm. kind of affiliations were looked down upon, mm-hmm. despite the fact that you all live in, let's mm-hmm. say, Croydon. All of you live in Croydon. The Jamaicans all mm-hmm. live in Croydon. The Ghanaians live in Croydon. There's some Albanians mm-hmm. also. There are some Albanians who live, let's say, in... Um, Feltham, which mm. isn't that far from, you know, Feltham or some other part that's not like mm. super, super success, like, su- like, you know what I mean? Like the sub, affluent, yeah, 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 super yeah. affluent. They still don't want to mix like that, even if in reality um, they're falling in love with each other and participating together and, you know, exchanging a lot mm. of culture. There's still an overtone of, mm. you know, they're not like us. So you're seeing a lot of gangs form. Yeah. So I don't understand. Yeah. Like, I so, don't understand uh, it. No, I just those, don't. Those are, yeah. Mm, mm. Uh, yeah. those are two sort of different things. So the gang thing is completely different. But in terms of the relationship things, what you'll find is that, again, a lot of people, it's only, we're only in 2000 and something, right? A lot of people are only first or second generation. So you have to understand that their cultural uh, anchor still comes from their parents who still know the reality of back home. Okay. So you'll find that even though they want to bring their culture together, there might be a strain because my background still dictates that I should be with a certain person because my parents' reality and the reality of everyone of that generation and your parents' generation, they're not used to interacting how we are. Ah. So, so like, yeah. So there, So when you get together and you start to want to go and experience that culture, it's sort of frowned upon by not this, this, this age group, but the past age group that still knows back home. Ah. That's why you'll find that that's sort of strain. And you'll find that even if we're together, we can't actually proceed but it's kind of changed i'll say it's changed a bit um i think it's definitely changed just as because as time goes older it goes on that that demographic gets older and they start to know say no you know there's the internet and they start to educate their parents so you'll find that you know a lot, but the jamaicans because they've been there for about a few more generations because windrush you'll find that they're more progressive in terms of interracial relationships and so are the white people that have been there obviously forever so you'll find that you know <clears throat> somebody's parent that's Jamaican actually was born in England. So now their kid, their parents don't have a problem with it because I grew up here as well, you know? Yeah. So as you go down the generation, generational line, you'll find that it's, it's just going to be more, much, much easier. What about, yeah. Kenyans, what about Kenyans living in the UK? And yeah, what about Kenyans living in the UK? Since you're a Kenyan living in the UK, um, do you think that that mm-hmm. kind of um, awareness of um, your children have the capacity to bring home someone who's not necessarily from your culture are you seeing people reject that how are, how are kenyans reacting to the whole situation i'll give you a very very real example like i said the generational thing with my parents right the conversation at one point in our house was no 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 no, no. you we no 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 bring back a akashiko or bring back a Ngrote or you know it was you know go kenyan it, that's the, that's what it was to start with then as we get older and even they start to think and now if i brought a white girl home it'll be absolutely fine that's that's just the reality like it's just a, it's just even the parents evolve in terms of the K- kenyan community one thing i know is i'm not as ingrained as i'd like to be over here but um i know that we i know that still even older 
if I'm just thinking about now the people slightly older than me, I know a lot of them that have intermarried. And what you'll find as well is when you're, you're even if you're Kenyan, you'll find yourself, you're going to a church with a lot of Ghanaians, you go to church with a lot of Zimbabweans, right? So in that, you sort of intermarry anyway just because you're both brown it doesn't really it doesn't really yeah because you'll find that the church is a massive anchor for a lot of african families so when you're anchored in the same faith your race doesn't really play a part because the primary thing is faith so if you're both christian and go to a similar church you'll say they have the same values and that you know that trumps any sort of um any sort of culture okay so yeah that's been the experience i've seen yeah but then you'll find that obviously there'll be a church where everyone's from zimbabwe so that's just a much easier thing but if a Kenyan goes there, you're obviously probably going to marry somebody from Zimbabwe. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's very yeah, interesting. That's, that's, and it's very yeah, similar to the... what happens here in Kenya because mm. um, here in Kenya, like, mm. um, of course, we constitute Kenya as a country for the benefit of those who are watching us and who don't really know much about us as Kenya. Kenya is a country that constitutes of about 42 tribes, and that number is still growing because some tribes are still being registered. So we are about 42 tribes. So that means there's 42 different cultures, different languages, um, but we are all unified um, under one language, which is Kiswahili. So we do see those tribal connections, um, those tribal clashes when it comes to how we manage each other when it comes to relationships. You'll very hear certain homes saying, don't bring somebody who's Luo, don't bring somebody who's Kikuyu, don't bring somebody who's um, uh. Somali, or don't bring somebody who's... You know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of intertribal yeah. conversations that um, intertribal um, relationships that are you know sometimes considered taboo. But with us as a generation, mm. I'm seeing that being phased out. Um, a very good example, yeah, sure. I think, is Kenyans usually have this bias towards, and there's usually this conversation you'll see Kenyans and Indians. There's a lot of history between Indian Kenyans who are Indian and Kenyans who are native African African like natives. Of, of Kenya, um, mm. and Indians are also mm. natives. Not that's not to say that, but like Kenyans who are Indian, and Kenyans who are African, usually find that sometimes there's mm. there's there's um, a bit of a taboo there. Or Kenyans who are Muslim versus Kenyans who are Christian. There's a bit of um, mm. you know a bit of like a taboo that's been established by prior generations mm. because of some of the historical yeah. injustices that have occurred, or some of the religious indifference mm. uh, differences that exists. Um, so. Mm. Nonetheless, um, I think as we progress as a generation, I think that's something that's going to be phased out. As we continue to get more educated, as mm. we continue to educate ourselves, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's something that um, yeah. we're going to understand more. Now on something less serious, yeah. which is something I've been itching to ask you about. How the hell is the UK so good at hip hop? How the hell? How <laughs> the hell? Like, that was, that was, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I know you weren't. I know you weren't. But yeah, yeah. I remember um, yeah. my first uh-huh. um, UK hip hop experience was Krepton Conan. In um, mm. uh, my first UK experience was Krepton Conan in 2015. My guy, my guy, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. That's I, I, I could not yeah. believe it. Mm. Yeah, but 2015 Krepton Conan. Don't waste Conan my time. That was mad. a track that just dropped. Now. Yeah, do. Uh-huh. Was it? Hey, don't waste my time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. that's what. Yeah. 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 Tell her don't waste my time. Turn and then now, like, so you see, now that's something I came back with in Kenya. So I've been listening. And you see, okay. the thing is, um, UK, like the UK flow and Stormzy and, and Santan back mm. then, like Santan back mm. then, like when Santan was still mm. doing freestyles. So like mm. now I've been there for like, like Kenyans are only recently beginning to appreciate um, UK, the UK style of rap. So there's a lot of Kenyan drill. I recommend, um, mm. I recommend you check them out. Um, there are guys called Brooklyn Boys. Really good at like that UK style of rap because it's very cultural, very sharp. It's just, it's just, there's just mm. something about it. And I've been on that um, since 2015. Um, and I mm. can tell you for a fact, man, like I, I, it surprises me how good the UK is at it. It's just, I think as Kenya, we have, mm-hmm. we're going to catch up eventually, but my guy, Dacha Valley, my yeah. guy, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Dave, Fredo, if money talks. Mm. Ah, yeah. no, come on. Um, there so I to give be fair, the, props, the, the yeah. UK music, the, the, the UK music uh, journey is a very interesting one. And it's one that I'm extremely proud of. 
Um, it started a long time ago, before even it became mainstream, right? Yeah. So what you'll find is, like I said, second generation. So what used to happen is, again, all these kids are put in the same... So this is talking about the birth of grime. It, we can go for hours, but I'll just summarize it, right? So the birth of... Like, what a genre. Music. So it started, it started with pirate radio, basically. So pirate radio used to be literally what you'd assume that, you know, guys are all on in a similar block, council houses, by the way, that's how it happens here. So the council, when you come, they all put you in a certain area, really subsidised rent, right? So, uh, and then you sort of get benefits. So you'll find all the immigrants are put in the same place. Every Ghanaian, every Jamaican, every Somali, every Kenyan, every, anyone, like, that's come. And then you'll find that the... The, 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 you'll find that the, um, they, some, they come there and then again that similar struggle that we're talking about you know they're, they're, they're all experiencing that and the outlet that you'll find is that now the kids needed a way to express what's happening on the streets but what was happening then is that the only thing they could look at is, um, is America as their sort of benchmark of how music looks right so you'll find that even back then guys started um, making music with like an American accent they weren't doing it in a British accent because it wasn't considered cool. So with pirate radio, you'd basically come into somebody's house, you would make the airwaves, and then what used to happen is back when they had the phones, they would be like, um, you know, texting your number, then we'll give you a shout out on the radio. So we built these stations for, for our culture, right? Um, this was mostly happening in, sort of in London. And then it started to spread and you started to get um, people getting older and that generation started to get a bit more money and then there was a bit more money injected sort of into the scene. And you'll find that there's more of a, of a structure. So these MCs can now go and, you know, start to make serious money, like the Skeptors, etc. So they sort of birthed, the Skeptors and the Wiley sort of birthed that, and the Dizzy Rascals. And they started to go a bit mainstream with someone like Tiny Temper. And again, what you'll find, these guys are all my age or slightly older. So you've, they decided that even though in an African household in the UK, if you're saying you're going into musical art, it was definitely like, what, what are you doing? But you started to see these one or two people, the Tinty Striders, one or two people that started to excel, right? And then they started to get recognition and the scene just got more and more money. I'm really trying to summarise it, but it got more and more money. There was things, I was telling you about this last night on the phone, like culture clash that used to happen. So now someone like Red Bull comes, sponsors an event, and you'll find that the, especially like, Jama like Jamaicans, they'll go and they'll bring their music and then merge that with now their new English culture and merge that with now their beats and you're starting to morph and the Africans come with their like their beats you know and you ha it's just like a, a massive melting pot of all these cultures coming all these second generation cultures coming and now they make their own sound out of all of that with all that that influence so that's why the generation you're seeing now are you know 20s etc and the older ones like Skepta who's in his mid 30s the ones that birthed it so you're seeing the second generation started this whole scene and then in the last especially five years or even eight years it just it just skyrocketed it's just skyrocketed and now it's been accepted by everyone else outside of the culture but it really started as a form of just expression from the struggle very similar to what happened with hip-hop back in the back in back in america yeah um, so it, that it was ex exact just the exact same thing but now it's just got to a level that is absolutely it's yeah. insane and I love seeing the amount of money that's there. I love seeing the amount of talent that's there and the fact we're having our galas now, we wear Grammys, etc. It's amazing. It's amazing. So it's been a it's it's interesting and it's all come from it's all come from struggle. It's just all yeah. come from struggle. I I, mm. I, I, mm. I really like the UK style of like rap, um and cause it resonates a lot, I think, with Kenyans here as well. Because we you know, of course Kenya is a British colony. So what would mostly go, and you know, that's why me and you're able to have this conversation. Kenyans really understand the language of English, like, because that's what we are taught in schools mm. from our basic training, from our mm. parents, but we are taught mm. the language of English. So that means that there's a lot that rarely goes over our heads. Um, I mean, it rarely goes over our heads that um, the English language rarely goes over our heads whenever we speak um, the language or whenever someone speaks to us um, and we're able to read, write, mm. and you know, the literacy rate in Kenya is going up. We are, I think, at over ninety percent now. So that means that so that means that we are able to enjoy um, British music, and we are also able to enjoy that style of hip hop. And you're seeing that style of hip hop really excel here, because I'm telling you, um, I'll send you a few videos. Um, there are some Kenyans who are doing a fantastic job with drill. Hey, it's it's almost. 
unbelievable. And you know, mm. the I think mm. something that's also played a role, I don't know if you've seen that Netflix show Top Boy, is something that Kenyans yeah, can watch and relate to because you see, like, we are in a system where like there's a lot, it's a very, every economic class um, obviously has its disadvantages, but the people who are impoverished, um, when they watch Top Boy, they can kind of empathize with that experience. So they can- And that's very real. Like Top Boy is one of the things I've seen that is, is so accurate in terms of the, how dark, you know, a life in the UK can get for a certain demographic. Because typically, the literature put out there, the media put out there is that England is this beautiful place, you know. You don't see the council blocks. You don't see the 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 chaos that happens on the ground for people that aren't of a certain class. Yeah. And the majority of immigrants, the reality was when they came that they're living like that. Yeah. Which, it, which, which was a massive shock to the system because you're coming from, like, your country and you're coming here expecting Kensington and you get that and your kids end up like that um, for, for a lot of people. So that's actually... what. If there's one show that I think is very, very accurate, it's, it's Top Boy. Yeah. For the extreme. Yeah. The Another extreme. interesting thing yeah. is we've seen like Burna Boy win a Grammy, which is something mm. for, for Africans that's very Wild. encouraging. That's uh, mm. very encouraging. Mm. And you know, he did the collaboration with Sauti Soul on his album. Um, Sauti Soul is um, mm. Kenya's biggest band. Um, we recommend mm. you go check them out. Mm. Um, so the, he did, they did mm. a song with uh, Burna Boy. In, on his album, the African Giant album. And like when, when I listened to, you know, when I see Africans excel at music and art, even here in Kenya, you know, art and music and thriving on your artistic talents isn't something that's normal um, because like this economy mm. does not reward um, talent proportionally. So you'll find that maybe a skilled musician, mm. skilled, you know, artist, um, even let's say a painter and an artist mm. like the, we don't have mm. the systems and the frameworks that exist in the UK to be able to properly monetize that, um, you know, that talent that somebody has. So even football, imagine, even soccer in Kenya isn't exactly a profitable endeavor. So you see, um, I feel like we still have a lot to learn from the UK and other developed countries so that you can be able to allow the youth to kind of thrive based on the gifts God has given them. Yeah, I think that's what I mm. think, yeah. So yeah, that, yeah, no, yeah, our, our artistry is definitely an important part of culture. Um, Oscar, speaking of, um, speaking of cultures, <laughs> um, for the last few minutes, I want us to just talk about the different places we've visited and some fun things that's happened to us when we're experiencing different cultures. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> I know one thing that happens, we've obviously, the first, like we said, we're gonna, we wanted to just start with, you know, me being in, in Kenya, you being in the UK. Those are like the first, the first stop. But I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of funny things that have happened or interesting things that we've experienced when we've gone to um, you, yeah. other places. Yeah. Do you, do you, mm. So do you, I don't know, yeah. do you want to kick off? Or? I have one, I have one story. This happened to me in India. I'll never forget. So mm. there is there is uh, there is a time when I was in India. This is uh, twenty thirteen. I was in India in twenty thirteen. Um, I was um, assisting. I was I was assisting in teaching English in India um, as part of a university project. Shout out to Strathmore Law School, the bomb. Um, mm-hmm. So it was very hot. So you know the monsoon weather. The afternoons can get ridiculously hot, even for us Kenyans. And the difference is, in Kenya, when it gets hot, the breeze that comes in is cold. Because, like, um, despite mm. the fact that, you know, we are, we, we are near the equator, so the temperatures are high, um, we also enjoy very cool winds coming down, being on the windward side of um, Mount Kenya, as well as the River mm. Valley. So that means that Nairobi enjoys a cool breeze, despite the temperatures. Mm. When you're in Delhi, it's the opposite, my friend. Mm-hmm. You're literally on a mm. mountaintop with a lot of humidity. And the monsoon yeah. w- wind that's coming is laden fro- with heat from the Sahara. So it's hot, 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 mm. hot. It's not hot. It's mm. hot, 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 hot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I remember um, one of my friends, um, I think his name, what was his name? I think it was Akash. So Akash comes and tells me, Oscar, I can tell you you're suffering. I'm like, yes, I'm dying. He's like, come, I show you a trick. So I'm like, fine. This guy goes and buys uh, chicken masala from a street food stand. Like super spicy chicken masala. I didn't know it was super spicy because I assumed 
it was just that normal spice I had gotten used to when staying there for a protracted amount of time. So this guy gives me a bucket, then we lock each other in a car. So in, instead of lowering the window, he puts up the window and then he's like, eat the chicken as fast as you can. Huh? Eat the chicken as fast this as you can. This sounds very counterproductive, no? This so <laughs> I'm telling you, when the camera, like, ah, ah, I'm just eating the chicken, I'm going, 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 I'm going. Do you know the temperature in that car and inside my body was so hot. When I left the car outside, I felt as if I was back to Nairobi weather. Everything felt colder. Everything felt cooler. And I was dying. I was like dying. Inside, I was like dying. It was hot as hell. Yeah. Yeah, mad. Yeah. That's a smart. They, they say to you know have hot things when it's hot, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, 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 yeah. <laughs> they mad. say they say they say it helps. Mad. Oh my God. How mad. did you? How was your stomach with the masala afterwards? Was was it all good? No, uh, uh, no it wasn't. Uh, I paid a heavy price. All right. The the tax. All right. <laughs> you know, all but right. uh, you know, you all say right. my boy, gotta see it through, my boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> gotta all see right. it through, my boy. <laughs> Wait, you. What was uh, the craziest experience? Yeah. One of the funniest memories I have that I can share on camera <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is, so basically when I graduated, naughty, um, naughty. I graduated, <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> when I graduated, uh, next day we went to America, right? And so we did like New York and uh, San Fran and we went to LA. And strangely enough, when we got to LA, a few things happened. Number one, it was my birthday when we were there. Number two, my friends were on a road trip in America and they happened to be in LA at the same time. Number three, my dad just turned up. He wasn't on the trip, he just turned up and I was like, what? So he just arrived in LA on my birthday. I was like, ah, surprise, I was like, okay. So, so now I'm like, okay, it's my birthday celebration, this is amazing. So we're staying in these, uh, in these apartments and uh, there's a really cool like rooftop. So now I want you to parallel this to Hangover, right? So, <laughs> so, um, so it's my birthday night and we're like, okay, uh, me and my friends, Come park your, your, your truck at our place and let, let's go out and let's experience, let's experience, you know, LA, an LA evening because we've all seen the films. So we go out and then we, um, we first go to this, so I text my friend who um, I used to go to school with, he, he went to Harvard, so he knew all about like, you know, the different, different places, no, he went to Harvard and UCLA, so he knew all the places to sort of go to, right? So then he was like, you have to check out this certain place, um, you have to check out this certain place, it's called The Bungo. If anyone know, it's called the bungalow in LA. And I was like, okay, cool. So we go there and then you find just a massive queue. We're like, okay. And the place is not like a, a, a typical like club or anything. It's just a massive house. Yeah. And we're like, okay, this is, this is strange. So we go there and then, um, and then first you're in the queue for like ages and everything there shuts at 11. That's when it shuts. So you can't go past 11, everything shuts. So we get there and it's like, what, like 10, 15 and we're like, so we get in at 10.15, we're like, so we've got 45 minutes. What? So <laughs> everyone's, everyone's like, okay, fine, let's enjoy 45 minutes. One of my friends gets, disappears during the night. Disappears, and we just get a text. So, they, so how it happened that he disappeared is he goes, guys, I've just met some people, come and meet them. He's one of those friends that just goes and talks to people. So he goes and he starts talking talk to some people from Fox News. They have a table, and he's just talking to this, like, 40-year-old lady from Fox News, and then he leaves, and we're like... Okay, that's the cut. That's what he would. Okay, do your thing. Then we're like, okay, yeah, just goes. And she's like, yeah, I don't know what. She, and then anyway, make your own mind up about that. So he leaves. We're like, okay, we've lost him. And then we're like, okay, fine. So we leave there. We say it's eleven. Let's go to now the UCLA campus because typically you know that what happens at college parties is there's loads of parties that happen in the houses. So we're going past. We're seeing like Alpha, Beta, Gappa, all these houses, and you could just like hear music inside. We're like, okay, how do we get into a party? How do we get into these? these college parties because these houses are massive you can just hear the vibes so we're like okay the one card we have is the english card you know because guys girls in america <laughs> girls in america they love the english accent so we're walking through the camp it's like a massive street with just loads of different houses we're walking through there just talking really loud <laughs> hoping that they hear the accent and they're like oh <laughs> so yeah no yeah so <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> and then and then and then my god and then <laughs> so so we're walking and then we just see these girls and they're like oh my god are you from the uk and we're like no <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> London, actually yeah yeah <laughs> so god save the queen and so <laughs> 
the things we so do. Like, oh my god! <laughs> they're like, oh my god! And we're like, yeah. They're like, oh my god! You have to come to this party. You gotta so like, come and party with us. My accent is. <laughs> They're like, they're like, come here. And so they're like, okay, let's go. So we start going into this party. We get to the door. What do we hear? We hear, Nino, Nino. Police come. We've just got, and they come. They, they got to shut this down. You are underage. Do, 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 do. We're like, oh my God. So we have to bounce. So we're like, okay. Like, what? Like, we have to, so we have to leave. So we start walking now down the hill. Now we're with these girls. Like, oh my God, this always happens. The cops are always shutting us down. And we're like, okay, this is mad. So we're just walking. And then, like, I'm talking to one, my friend's talking to other, like, we're from Armenia, like, where the Kardashians are from, right? <laughs> so we're like, so we start calling them the Kardashian girls, because they're actually sisters and cousins. So like, oh, you're the Kardashians, and we're having banter, and they're loving it. So we're walking down, and what happens is, as you're walking, one house gets shut down, another house gets shut down. So what happens is, everyone's coming out of these houses, and you're walking down, it's just heaps of college students. Yeah. And some are drunk, some are this, this, this. It's so American, right? So we walk down... And then we're like, so what happens now? They're like, I don't know, guys. Let's like get some food or something. And we're like, okay, fine. So we're like, let's go to Denny's. <laughs> so we're like, okay, cool. Oh, so we go to this Denny's. Now it's me, my boys. There's like four of us. And there's like eight Armenian girls. And we're sat there. We, they have to make like a whole table like down the restaurant. And then it's like 3 a.m. by this point. And then we just, it's because we left at 11. And yeah. then we're there walking around. Yeah, so about, about two, about two, two, three. No, we must get that like 1 a.m. And we're there till like 3, right? And it's just vibes. Like, we're just a, it's just a long table, chatting to these girls, they're dying, they're laughing, blah, 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 blah. We're there just chatting, order so much food, and it's just an amazing evening. Now, no. obviously, you know, we're like, we're, we're, we're well behaved boys, so we go home. Oh, um, of course so you do. Now, anyway, of course you home, do. When we get home, <laughs> we get home, we get home, and we get home, we get home back to the apartment. <laughs> and then it's the next morning, right? Remember, my, my, one of my friends is lost. Remember, yeah, the fo- yeah, with the 40 year old, yeah. So, yeah, so we get there. And so, uh, so my boys are like, out of respect, I'm not going to sleep in your apartment. Or we're going to sleep up top because it's LA. So they're like, okay, fine. So they get some blankets, they go sleep on the rooftop. I go and sleep in my, in my, in my, in my room. Um, so then the next morning, the next morning, I, text my, uh, I get a text from my boys like, Eli, bro, have you got any like uh, snacks and stuff? I'm like, yeah, sure, let me bring up some, some breakfast. So I take breakfast up to the boys and there's like a hot tub. They sat there in the hot tub and we're just chatting about the night. And then we're like, wait a minute, where's my friend? I'm not going to say his name. They're like, where's our friend, bro? <laughs> As we say that, you know, the sun's coming up. <laughs> out of the horizon, we see a figure. <laughs> a winner. <laughs> like a man. The, the champion like of the evening. Back from the ch- <laughs> he just comes out and he's got towels He's got like some, sl- you know, those, those ice, <laughs> ice drinks. He's got a crate of ice drinks. He's got snacks and food. And we're like, what? He's just brought. F- and we're like, firstly, how did you find where we are? Yeah, You've yeah. never, <laughs> how did you find us? How did you get all of this stuff? How did you get all the towels and everything? He's like, guys, don't worry about it. We just sit there and we just debrief and we just sat there and the sun rises. We're full. We're in the jacuzzi, just vibing and laughing. It was That's the most, right. it was my birthday night as well. It was just a wild uh, 24 hours now the next morning the, the reason i remember this story is because you talked about the curry right the next morning is there's an england match happening so we get in the in their van we go to like an english um <laughs> if my friend hears this story he'll die we go to this like english pub to watch the game we're like yeah let's watch the game but then at, there's the pub and then there's the beach so after the beach uh imagine back then i used to drink stuff so we're very hungover so after afterwards we go back to the beach and we're just laying there and then my stomach just goes <laughs> Oh my god. I'm laying there and I just go, boys, boys, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not okay. And it's not, I'm so I'm, I'm not gonna tell I'm gonna tell it in a very subtle way. <laughs> no, keep going. Keep going, bro. So they're like they're like they're like, Eli, how bad? They're like, boys, I need to go now. You know when you're running and you're like your limbs are shaking. You're running <laughs> I run to the bar. I run to the bathroom, I get to the beach toilets, and there's a queue. I'm like, (laughs) I have to wait, and everything, I'm sweating, everything, I don't know what I had, but everything is wrong. I get to the, (laughs) I can't tell this story properly, because it's just, I can't say everything on camera. I get to the bathroom, let's just say there's, (laughs) there's no, there's no 
facility. There's no roll or anything. There's no da- There's no tissue. <laughs> there's no roll. What did you I do? I ring my boy. I ring my boy. I'm like, I said first. I sent him a snap because <laughs> Snapchat was lit then. I sent him a snap, and I have that picture, and I say, "This is the lowest point of my life." Oh I'm like, help God. me. But he takes a while to pick up. So now the queue is thinking, what's happening in that cubicle? After like an extensive period of time, he finally comes and he's had to go and search shops yeah. and find roll because there's no roll on the beach. You're at a beach. There's no roll. Yeah, We're not men. Yeah. We're not prepared with this stuff. Finally, he comes and he embarrasses me. He goes, hey, Elijah! Anyway, is Elijah in this cubicle? <laughs> like, oh, cute. This is- Elijah! <laughs> Elijah, here you go. Here you Elijah, go, mate. I've got your toilet roll. You said you need toilet roll. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. I just put my hand up and when I leave that toilet, I just leave with my head down. Just... And everyone is just looking. What has Everyone's this looking done? just like you took like 20 minutes, bro. It was, I can't even tell you some other stuff, but it was just, it was wild. It was, I still have that picture remembering the lowest moment of my life. Oh my I god. I just turned 20, is it 23? Bro, it was hilarious. Oh but that my was my god. 23rd birthday. That was like the 24 hours. That's yeah. so crazy. That's the wildest it story. Was... <laughs> Wildest. Yeah, it was. Yeah, wildest. Yeah, wildest. yeah. That was a. Uh, yes, LA was a. Uh, but also, it's a disappointing place. The boulevard, if there's one thing that disappoints me in life, is the boulevard. Bro, I went to McDonald's oh. there. I went mm. to the bathroom. In the next bathroom, somebody's doing heroin. I walk out of the bathroom. Some guy walks in and he goes, I hate niggers. And like starts throwing stuff in the McDonald's. That's Hollywood Boulevard in LA. You know, you see all the pictures where Jimmy Kimmel. Next to Jimmy Kimmel's thing, the Chinese thing. Yeah. It's. Oh, it's I still disgusting. haven't, I still, disgusting. you know, what's, what's one of my greatest, like, um, one of my greatest, uh, one of my greatest, 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 like, greatest, like, tasks, the things I want to achieve in life, I have to visit mm. America for a protracted amount of time. Mm. Because, like, I, um, the game yeah. of basketball won, just that, on that strength alone, the game of basketball mm the amount of history, the amount of culture, how it's impacted mm. the world. And I think that's something that's very important for me to like experience. So like the fact that you've done it, maybe you mm. never know, Mantok might do a... Bro, we sh- Yeah, Might honestly, do a US tour. It's, it, yeah, 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 yeah. we might actually yeah. like, save some the, money. Yeah, it's an amazing place. Oh my God. Yeah. Amazing place. Yeah. Honestly, I think, yeah, New York is where you... Like, that's one thing that actually took my breath away. Like, the, just the scale is ridiculous. Yeah. But I think we I think we should save like each like a story a, 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 a story for each episode. That's 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 one of that, many. That's an that's one epic of, story. That's, a, that's an epic story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, there's 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 a couple more, but we'll yeah. save that because we've 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 about to hit an hour. Yeah. But I think the point of this episode is to tell people that if you get a chance to do something, it's experience somewhere outside of your comfort zone. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be foreign. Just go somewhere different. Just just yeah. Know, I, th- put I think I think in those environments. I think. I ha- you've, you've really challenged me to share like a story about something that was mm-hmm. very different for me, not necessarily embarrassing, but I had, mm-hmm. there's a place in India called Rishikesh. Um, it's in the mm. north. You know, m- most people, when they go to, you know, when you think about India, you think about Goa because of the beaches, um, mm. Kashmir, mm. Um, Bangalore, but mm. like there's a, there's a very beautiful place that sits at the bottom of the Himalayan mountains called Rishikesh. It's like a, it's like a five hour drive mm. to the north of, of Delhi, mm. um, from Delhi. My friend, I, it's literally a monk town. Like, I literally, a monk town. Like, you hear the bell, like, no. Um, um, it's, it's, it's one, like, I think it's the, the origin of, I don't, I, I think it was the origin of, um, Ayurvedic yoga, though I don't, I don't really remember it as clearly as I, I should, but um, it was such mm. an experience that was outside of my context of a, as a Kenyan man living in East Africa. Mm. And no experience mm. that I've ever had globally touched me more than that experience in Rishikesh. Simply seeing mm. like people, like a town that is geared towards finding yourself, you know, yogis yeah. and and the whole mm. discussion around Shiva. So there, apparently, that's where Lord Shiva used to reside. So it's like, right. so there's shrines everywhere. And you see, for Kenyans, we we see churches a lot. We're used to seeing churches um, and, mm. you know, mm. mosques and stuff. But you're not used to seeing mm. an entire community of, you know, yogis and people coming in from all over the world to just, like, get this spiritual experience. 
Because for me, that was one of the most beautiful places I've seen in my entire life. Um, the Ganga River flows mm. down that, that Himalayan mountain. It's like right next to it. I'm like there. Whenever I say it, you can even see like my head goes there. Like it's, yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. it's really th- one of the most place, beautiful places on earth. I've seen a lot Serious. of things. Yeah, I saw the Taj Mahal mm. as well, but that experience, the Rishikesh experience, now that we're talking about exposure, and when I came back mm. from India, um, that time, I think mm. I was 18, when I came back from India at 18, I just used to be someone who cares about himself and his own needs, had no, didn't even, you know, I didn't have really a, a, a soul for charity, but my mm. soul for charity, I feel like my life truly began after that Indian experience. That's when my life truly began. Like I, I came back a different mm. person. So I, I completely suggest wow. that like if mm. you have the chance to travel the world yeah, experience yeah. especially as an East African, there's a lot that the world it thinks your mind. Yeah, it opens your mind, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes, mm. that is my two cents. Yeah, travel. Yeah, travel. Yeah, there's a quote that I saw once that says that, you know, I'm gonna take my kids everywhere in the world so they're not impressed by somebody shipping them off to Miami <laughs> for a weekend. Yeah, so I think that's, yeah, yeah that should be the goal yeah. if you're trying to hustle. Yeah, give yeah, your kids exposure. If you it can. opens your mind, yeah. 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 It opens your mind. And, also, and explore makes, Kenya. Because yeah. I found that even when I'm there, I don't explore Kenya. Like, there's so much to do, even in Kenya. Yeah. When are you so coming back? Take... Yeah, come back home. Very soon. Very come back soon. home. Come yeah, back yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, want, I, re- I, need, to, I need to actually explore, experience even yeah. more within the country to start with. Yeah, yeah. let's start travel. There. Let's travel, Lila. Yeah. Let's take, let's take Mantok. Let's take Mantok on a road trip. Let's take my job on a road. There it is. It's always it's always there. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be down. Yeah, I'll be yeah. down. Good stuff. So yeah, my next travel will be back home. So I will see you guys soon. There will be an episode when me and Oscar sat down, and then uh, we're back to normal. Back to yeah. normal. Good episode. I enjoyed this. This is fun. We'll sh- we'll be keep sharing these stories. There's yeah, the there's always a story. There's always more in the locker. There's always. And maybe story. guys, you guys can tell us some of your best places you've been to in the comments. Like, where's the best place you've visited? What's the best experience you've had yeah. outside of your comfort zone? Not a different country, even just a different town. Let us know in the comments. Let's share some stories. Yeah. Have some laughs. Tell us about your travel experience. Tell us about your travel experience. Tell us about... Yeah, tell us. Share and care. Tell us. I told you about a very dark place, you know? So, yeah. yeah that was a dark <laughs> place for sure. That was the seventh was circle of hell. Sure. <laughs> seventh sa- so, the question I have before, you, before we close. Oh, no. Before <laughs> the <laughs> role came... Had you done the business or did you have to hold it in the whole time? Oh, I, I, that was, I, I was gone. <laughs> it was finished. <laughs> as soon as I stepped over that threshold. So you had already, the point, PONR, <laughs> the point of no return. Yeah. <laughs> PONR, you had already gotten past the point of no return. There was no coming back now. It was a wrap. It was either. There was no coming back. I couldn't you, leave there. It was either. I ran to the sea. Yeah. It was either you enter, is it the Pacific Ocean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, bro. I'll tell you the exact details later. It's hilarious. Mad. But yeah, that's what I can Mad. share on camera. Uh, I'm just sharing honest and elevated conversations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Good stuff, guys. See you on the next episode. See you on the next episode. <laughs> Peace. Yeah.